Here's another important video from the Personal Defense Network. Throughout this video, I'll be referring to a hooked wooden cane. And that's a generic concept. It certainly doesn't mean exactly this cane, nor does it necessarily mean a cane that looks exactly like this one. Any wooden cane without any metal parts with a hooked handle is going to allow you to execute the techniques that we're going to teach on this DVD. And also, it's going to be the type of cane that you can take with you anywhere, and more importantly, find anywhere. For example, I've been to one very popular museum in New York City where when you go in, if you're carrying a wooden cane, they do not allow you to take that cane into the museum. Obviously, there's concerns about maybe something being hidden in the cane or, or the cane not just being a simple wooden walking stick, maybe being something else, and in fact, concealing some other type of weapon. Um, we all know that there are canes that you know, have firearms built into them. There are canes certainly with blades built into them. And that is not what this DVD is about. This DVD is about the kind of hooked wooden cane that you can pick up at a local pharmacy or a medical supply store, or just about anywhere, and use to defend yourself. So when you go into the museum, they will take your cane, hand you another hooked wooden cane, and allow you to enjoy the museum. And you'll still have a personal defense tool that you can use with all the techniques that we're going to share. So this particular hooked wooden cane has been designed with features that enhance its ability to be used as a defensive tool. We're going to talk more about those in a minute. But first, let's look at a couple of other types of canes that you might encounter or that you might have with you. Now, This type of cane is also wooden, also can be carried with you just about anywhere, but has a straight handle. Now there is a small amount of hook here, but as you'll see as we go throughout the demonstrations on this video, this type of cane with a straight handle will not allow you to be as versatile as that hooked handle. It's not as secure to hold in situations where you want to have your hands free. Obviously, this is not as good a purchase as it hangs on my wrist and I get ready to grab it in my hand in a defensive capacity if I were sending a message on my BlackBerry or doing something else with my hands. In this mode, if I were to move quickly, I could actually have that cane slide off my hand and get lost to me. It also would be much more difficult to use this cane in a way where you're just hanging it on your shoulder, which is almost impossible, hanging it on a jacket pocket, hanging it on your belt, also becomes much more difficult when you don't have the hook. Obviously, some of the trapping maneuvers that we might do to try to hook someone's wrist or leg, or maybe if we were defending someone else from a lethal attack, even consider hooking the throat area, maybe from behind, to keep someone from moving forward to attack someone we were trying to defend, this is going to be much harder to do with this straight-handled cane. The last cane I want to look at is actually becoming much more common. This type of metal cane, designed specifically to enhance its therapeutic aspects and its ability to be used to help someone who actually needs a cane to support their walking or standing, is much more difficult to use for defense. The hook here is actually designed to put the weight of the hand and the pressure of the hand directly over the shaft. Now while that is a much better way to design a cane for walking, it's not a great way to design a cane for self-defense. This angle is not nearly the same as an angle that comes back this way. As you can see, it would be very hard to trap anyone in this angle coming in from the side when they could simply move out of the way of it. Coming in around the knee, coming in around the knee this way, and simply moving out of the way allows them to escape that trap. Similarly, with this type of grip, which has a high amount of friction and is also very collapsible, it's very spongy, if you will, when you're holding on in that mode and someone tries to grab the cane and you want to maneuver it into a new position, you actually have to loosen your grip in order to get that to turn. When you see some of the techniques that we're going to use for very close quarters, you're going to want to be able to move quickly around that hook. You're going to be able to quickly move from the hook down onto the shaft in some cases also to use certain techniques. So this type of a cane, which actually, when we got ready to do this video, was easier to find in the average pharmacy, isn't the best type of cane for defense. So again, we want to go back to that simple hooked wooden cane. Now this particular cane has been enhanced. There are a couple things I want to talk about specifically to this cane, which is designed for fighting for personal defense, that may not exist on that average everyday cane. They're certainly not necessary to have in the tool that you choose to carry for defense, but they will enhance your ability to perform certain techniques and even open up new techniques to you. The most obvious adjustment that you have on this cane is that the shaft is smooth on one side, but notched on another. This shark's tooth pattern gives us fine areas and fine edges that will concentrate the force of any strike or any type of pressure. 
So if I push against someone with this side of the cane or strike someone with this side of the cane, obviously the force is going to be dissipated around the entire rounded edge. If I strike with this side of the cane, the same exact amount of force is going to be concentrated on these edges. And of course, that means you are more likely to break the skin, more likely to cause pain. Similarly, if I rub this side of the cane against my arm, there really isn't much friction, there really isn't much pain there at all. Even if I go against something like this bone ridge on the outside of my arm, that's really not uncomfortable in any way. Reversing the cane and using the shark's teeth against that bone ridge creates pain and pretty instantly creates a little bit of an abrasion. If I were to seriously try to apply pressure against this part of my arm, maybe against the shin, the knee, or even the side of the head coming up against the skull or the temple area, or the jaw, anywhere where there's a bone close to the skin surface, moving these shark's teeth up against that part of the body will cause a great deal of pain and discomfort. So that's one enhancement to this particular cane, which might, to the casual observer, simply look decorative, that allows you to be more versatile and more efficient and effective with this tool. The other notches that you see here, which are much shallower, down at this end near the base of the cane, and at this end near the handle, are really just there as gripping surfaces. These allow me to get a more precise grip on the cane, make it less likely that someone can pull the cane out of my hand. As you can see, if I hold here where it's more smooth and I pull, I can move my hand around that very quickly and easily. With these knurled areas, these shallow notches, I get much better purchase. Similarly, on this end, if I'm going to be using a technique that requires me to hold down at the bottom of the cane so that I'm striking with this larger surface if I'm having to hit someone or I'm trapping or in some way using the hook as a tool against someone, again, this area will give me better purchase on the cane itself. The hook area is also very important on a fighting cane. This hook area is actually much wider than you will see on a standard walking cane. The hook that comes in and actually closes can't be used to trap limbs, can't be used to hook around the wrist, for example. It's also going to be harder to take and twist the cane quickly in the hand if I need to do that. You'll see a technique very soon where if someone grabs my hand, I can use that twisting motion to create a trap, to create pressure on their wrist and escape from that grasp or maintain control. Well, if this hook comes in very tightly, I can't make that twist maneuver nearly as easily. So a wider opening on the hook is actually preferable for a fighting cane. And the last thing we'll look at is the point at the hook. Now this is not very sharp. You can see here that this comes down to a little bit of an edge, but it's certainly not going to cut skin. I can rub it against the back of my hand. I can poke it against my arm. And this isn't going to break skin. It's not sharp by any stretch but it is a concentrated point that will again focus pressure. When we see some of the techniques where we're gonna apply pressure with this point into the hand to make someone release us if they've grabbed us from behind, or even into their kidney area if they're behind us and we're pulling forward, or if they're in front of us and we're pulling in towards us, that hook it being pointy, being a little bit sharper than normal, is gonna allow us to concentrate that pain effect, cause more discomfort, and be able to use our techniques more effectively. So remember, when it comes to choosing a tool for personal defense, that tool that you're gonna carry with you and rely on during the worst case scenario, the simple hooked wooden cane that you're gonna find at the pharmacy or the medical supply shop is probably the best bet. It's the one that isn't gonna to raise too many eyebrows, you're gonna be able to carry it with you, and you're gonna be able to execute the techniques that we talk about very, very efficiently. If you look for a custom-made cane, a cane that's actually purpose-built for personal defense or for fighting, there are several good places you can find them. They're going to be a little more expensive, but they're probably worth the price if you're serious about personal cane defense. Check out more videos just like this one at the Personal Defense Network.